how to replace the strings on a bass guitar. You'll need two things to do this job. One is wire cutters or something to cut the strings with, but you could get away without this. And obviously you'll need a new string or a new set of strings. In this tutorial, I'll be using a Fender Jazz style bass guitar. However, the same principles and the same techniques apply to all basses. So with a little bit of common sense, you could use what you learn in this video and apply it to any type of bass. Also, I'll be replacing all the strings. However, if you just want to replace a broken string, the same principle applies. Right, let's get started. And the first string we'll be removing is the top G string as it's a four string bass. And we just need to loosen it off until it comes off the tuning peg or the machine head as it's more correctly known. You'll notice during this video I'll speed up some sections so it's not quite so boring. Once you've loosened off the string and removed it from the machine head, you can then unthread it from the tailpiece. Now you'll notice the string just goes through a hole where it locks at what's called the nipple, which looks like a bead on the end of the string. So we just pull this and pull right the way out. However, be very careful where the string curls up at the end because these strings are really sharp and if you're not careful you can scratch the lacquer on your bass. Once you've removed the string you might like to take this opportunity to clean that section of the bass as it gives you access to places where you can't normally clean. If I'm not doing video tutorials I normally take all the strings off the bass before I start restringing it then I can clean the bass up properly. When you're ready you'll want to unpackage the string or strings and select the correct one. They obviously go from the thinnest string at the top G to the thickest string at the bottom E. So I need to select the thinnest string. To put the new string on we basically reverse the process we used to remove it. So we push the string through the hole at the end of the tailpiece and bring it over the top of the bridge and then pull the string through until it stops at the nipple. Then we want to stretch the string out across the neck to the nut and hold it there for a moment. Before going any further, it's always a good idea to check the bridge. They can flip round whilst you're removing the strings and it's very difficult to tell when they're upside down sometimes. If you look at this one, the only real clue it's the right way up is the holes in the end of the little grub screws and these have got allen key holes in them. The other side doesn't have the holes, so make sure it's the right way around before you start putting the string on any further and tightening it up. When you're ready, you want to push the string as far as it'll go into the hole in the middle of the string post. And then bend the string and bring it down around the string post. Then you want to start tightening the string up so you can get it to a point where it'll hold itself in place without too much effort. It's important for me to point out here that the strings should wind on the correct way. On this particular guitar, because all the machine heads are on the left hand side, the strings wind on anti-clockwise from the right hand side. However, a general rule is that the strings should always wind on from the middle. So therefore, if you've got a bass with two machine heads on one side and two machine heads on the other side, you notice the strings always wind on from the middle. So you'll notice here that the strings that lead to the machine heads on the left hand side come from the right hand side and wind on counterclockwise, whereas the strings that lead to the machine heads on the right hand side come from the left hand side and wind on clockwise. OK, before tightening up the strings too much, it's worth checking that the strings are taking the correct route, and that is through the hole in the tailpiece, over the bridge, through the correct groove in the nut, under the string tree, and around the post on the machine head in the correct direction. Thank you. 
Right, let's see that done again on the next string, which is the D string. Firstly, we want to loosen off the string at the machine head until it's loose enough to come out of the end of the guitar. Then, go to the other end and take hold of the nipple and thread the string out until it comes out completely, being careful not to scratch your bass. Next, we select the appropriate string and thread it through the hole at the tailpiece, making sure it goes over the top of the bridge and the bridge is the right way around. Then bring the string up the neck and through the appropriate groove in the nut and push the string into the end of the machine head and start to wind it on in the correct direction. Remember, don't wind it on too tight until you're sure the string is correctly rooted over the bridge, through the nut and under the string tree. Then you can tighten the string up a bit more. However, there's no need to tune the bass at this stage. I'd leave that until the end when you've replaced all the strings. Right, let's do the same process again with the A string. Firstly, unwind the machine head until the string becomes loose enough to come out. Then, pull it through the hole in the tailpiece, being careful not to scratch your base. Now select the correct string that you want to replace the A string with, but this time we want to do one slight difference, and that is we just want to put a slight bend in the end of the string, leaving about an inch. Now this is so you can get the string over the bridge, because quite often these thicker strings just don't want to cooperate and go over the bridge and by putting a little bend in it, it just makes it that much easier to thread the string. Once you've got the string over the bridge, pull it all the way through until it stops at the nipple. Now let's go to the other end of the guitar. Now you'll notice here, the string is quite long, so you might need to cut a little bit off. How much you cut off is entirely up to you, within reason. At the very shortest, you want the string to go at least 3 inches past the post, and at the most, about 5 or 6 inches. It really depends how many winds you like to see on the post at the end of the base. For this example, I'm going to use about 3 inches, and this just gives me 2 or 3 winds, which I think is about right. Remember that the thickness of the post makes a difference to how much string you should cut off because for the same length of string you get more winds on a smaller post. The jazz style guitar has a very thick post, however I've got other bass guitars that have quite thin posts and therefore you don't need to have so much spare string. In this picture you can see the headstock of a Shine violin bass style guitar and my Fender jazz style guitar, and you can see the posts are considerably different. Once you're happy with the length of the string, you can wind it on as you've done previously. Push the string in the end of the string post, bend it over, and wind it on in the correct direction. Before you get too tight, check the root of the string is correct, and it's going over the bridge and through the appropriate slot in the nut. You'll notice here, 
there's no string tree for the string to go under so it doesn't need to go under anything right let's do the final string which is the bottom E string so as previously we wind the machine head to loosen the string until it becomes loose enough to come off the machine head then we pull it from the tailpiece through the hole being careful not to stretch the base and remove the string completely now we get the final string and we do the same as we did with the previous string and that is just to bend it a little near the end then we push it through the hole and make sure the bend is pointing upwards so it'll go over the bridge. Pull the string through until you reach the end. And then guide the string to the other end of the base. Again we might need to cut the string slightly to make sure we don't have too many winds on the post. So I'm doing three inches again and I'll cut that string there and then as previously we push string in the end of the post bend it over and wind it on Finally, let's just check this last string is correctly rooted. Through the hole, over the bridge, through the correct notch in the nut, and into the machine head, winding on the correct way. Finally, you just need to do a quick inspection of the base to check everything seems alright. And if everything is alright, you can tune it up and then start playing. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful and if you did please like and subscribe and then you'll see when I post new ones.